All right, so welcome back everybody. So for this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to play Endangered. Now Endangered is a co-op game and you can also play this game solo as well. So that's cool. So I played this by myself as in solo where I get to control two characters if I'm playing solo. So let's, without further ado, let's show you guys how to play this game. Now, the first thing I wanna mention um, is what's gonna happen to you if you lose the game? What are the conditions if you lose the game? Well, one condition is these tiger maples here. If all but one or none of your tigers are gone, so if you lose all your tigers except one, you lose the game. Of course, if you lose all of them, you lose the game. But still, if you lose all your tigers, even if one remains, you lose the game. That's one way to lose the game. Another way to lose the game is there are these destruction dials. Okay, now I've got it set up for the tiger game. And so there's 16 of these destruction tiles or deforestation tiles. If all of these tiles that I'm holding are out on the board, you lose. So that's a second way you can lose the game. Another way you can lose the game is also the condition of winning the game as well. Depending on player count will depend on how many rounds or years there are. If you're playing a two player game, there will be nine rounds in total. And there are two years known as the voting years. During the voting years, these cards up here, which are the ambassador cards, okay, you have to basically get the votes from four, um, four ambassadors. And if you don't get those votes for four ambassadors, you lose if in the second year. So you have two voting years. You can't even, you can't even end the game, or should I say, you can't even begin a voting year and try to end the game and try to win the game, depending on player count, of course. And so if you're playing a two player game, you won't be able to do it until the eighth round. You have a chance to win the game in the eighth round. If you fail to get four votes, then you have one more chance, a second voting year, which will be the ninth round, the last chance. And if you don't get all four votes from the ambassadors up there, which are all face down, because that's how they start, then you lose the game, okay? So that's how you lose the game. So obviously three ways to lose the game. Okay, so now let's talk about how we play this game. Okay. So the first thing is, each player is going to get basically a character, a role that they're going to be. And I've got the zoologist out, and I have the TV wildlife host. Another thing they're each going to get is each character has two specialty cards here that they can choose from, that they can add to the game. They're going to add one of the two. So there's two green, for instance, and there's two blue, if you're playing with these, obviously, roles here. Okay, so that's something as well. So there's some unique, some uniqueness because you have two choices. These dice will stay here in the setup. That it does not matter which side they are on. Also, um, there are these player cards. Okay, and you start the game off by drawing two player cards. Okay, so you get to start with two of these um, it, that will form your hand and there is no limit to the amount of cards you can have in your hand. But yeah, you get to start with two. Another thing that you'll notice on these specialty cards is depending on which specialty card you choose, you'll have to go through your basically your player deck here and look for this one here, which is the volunteer. And then you immediately play the volunteer, okay? So let's search for the volunteer since that will also be kind of important to know. So here it is, here's the volunteer. So the volunteer immediately gets taken out of the player deck and you immediately play it, okay? So this means this is an action card. Now on the, in this game, we're gonna be taking actions with our dice, okay? We take actions with our dice. This is kind of like a dice placement game of sorts because we'll be putting dice down to, to uh, basically uh, take actions. And so this will add an additional action to the beginning of the game. So now we have the volunteer over here. Now these are four actions you can take. So these are our four starting actions, 
but as we get more action cards, there'll be more actions to take and more variety of stuff you can do. And obviously, the TV Wildlife host also has a card here called Fundraising. So let's go ahead and search for Fundraising next. So Fundraising, where is that? Here it is, second to the bottom. And you immediately play this one too. Now this is a once one-time effect. You immediately play it. So I can immediately play it now because I'm I'm told to because that's the that's the specialty card I chose. Um, and then each player gets to start the game off with one million dollars. Each of these money tokens indicate one million dollars. So each player would also get to have one of these thanks to fundraising. Awesome. Okay, so that's how fun. That's how once uh, once abilities will work. Now, let's talk about the actual actions of the game. Okay, so on your turn, the first phase of the game is you will take your dice, you will roll them, okay, and then you will pick obviously where you're going to put these down. So we've got a two, we've got a one, and we've got a four. And you'll, we have room for three dice on this one, this one, this one, and even this one. One thing to note when placing dice, you cannot place two of your same dice on the same action except for this one here called Social Media Campaign. There is no limit to the amount of dice you can put here. So it's the one exception to the rule. But the rest of these, you can only put one of your three dice on these here. Also, another thing. Depending on the number you choose will make it harder for your opponent, your, your, not your opponent, but your, a player who's also playing with you. So you want, might want to choose a low number for an action you think, obviously, your friend you're playing with is also going to choose for their next turn. Because it has to be higher than the number that you put down. So if you put down a one, if you're playing a two-player game, they have to put down a three. Ouch, right? Assuming they roll a three. And then if they don't, then they they can't take that action. So you want to definitely try to work with your teammates and try to obviously pick uh, definitely the low numbers for actions that you know your friends are going to also take. So that's another thing to obviously take note of when you're playing this game. Um, so I explained that. Oh, okay. So that's basically what you do on your action phase. You roll the dice. Then you choose which action you're going to take. So let's say I put um, the one here on the action called plan. Well, I can play a card from my hand. That's what that card, that, what, that's what that action allows me to do. Remember, we start with two cards in our hand. So I could use that action to play one of these cards in my hand. Both of these are action cards. This one will allow me to add one influence to one ambassador. And this is this one is mating pairs. It allows me to add one animal to an adjacent empty space. I mean, adjacent to a mating pair that's empty. So that's interesting. They're both very useful. But one of the one of the things you definitely need to do in this game is you need to get those ambassadors flipped face up because you need to start getting influence on them as soon as you can because you don't want to get it too late. You want to get that taken care of right away. And the only way you're really going to flip those face up and see what ambassador you're going to be dealing with and what you need to do to basically get their vote, well, you need to be able to place influence. So when you play this action, which is called add one influence to one ambassador, you automatically get to flip up one of those ambassador cards. So let's say I do that. So let's say I put down the, t let's say I, I played the sign petition as my second action or say my first action was the play occurred for my hand. So that's what I did. I planned it out and played the sign petition. So that was my first action roll. Then I'll put the two down on add one influence to one ambassador. Okay, so then I would flip a ambassador face up. So let's see, how about this one? Okay, it's USA. In order to get their vote, which you can't do until a voting year, so in a two-player game, it's not until it's not until round eight. Um, you need to count how many destruction tiles are still in the supply and the amount of influence cubes. And then if that is 10 or more, you gain their vote. So influence cubes are these green cubes over here. So I would need, 
obviously to have enough destruction tiles here plus enough cubes combined in order to gain their vote even if that was 10 influence cubes but it's really hard to get influence out so there is probably if you were to put all your influence on usa then there's no like there's not likely a chance you're going to get influence out to the other ambassadors so you do need to try to find ways of getting rid of these destruction tiles that will land on the board but that's basically what that means so we did that we took care of usa um and we get to add one influence to usa because that was the action i took signed petition so now they've got an influence on that card okay so i still have one dice so i can still do one more action so for my last action i could for instance i could use my action to either draw another card or gain one buck but instead i'm going to put this here on move one animal one space and so i'm going to move this animal to here so now we have three mating pairs you always start the game off at least uh, with this setup with this variation with two lions here and two lions here which are two mating pairs but now we have three mating pairs and now that comes into play because now that my action phase is done the next phase of my turn begins which is the offspring phase so during the offspring phase, you will roll this dice. This is the offspring. The offspring dice. And I've got a dice tower you guys can't see off screen, so I'll just put that in there. And I got a six. So, what does that mean? Well, you, what you do is you will count up the amount of mating pairs that you have, plus one. So that would equal four. If I get a four or lower, so four to zero... I would automatically get to place out one new tiger to the equation. And I could, you know, they would it would have to go to an adjacent space near a mating pair. I would get to choose where it would go, but it has to be adjacent, obviously. If you can't place out a tiger because you've got tigers surrounding all of your mating pairs and you have um, these destruction, these deforestation tiles over there, completely surrounding them in, a, in, a, in, a, in added to the equation, then you don't get to place out your tiger. So just so you know, but um, but because I got a six, and since I'm so good at rolling sixes, unfortunately I will not get to place a tiger. So my good luck at rolling sixes all the time is going to be a very painful experience for those I'm playing with when it's time to roll the dice. Oh well, so I don't get to obviously add a tiger to the equation. No baby tigers were born this turn. The next part of the phase after that is the destruction phase. So then you'll roll this destruction dice. So let's do that. Now, I have to pick, normally you would have to pick a row or column that has at least one tiger in that row or column before rolling the dice. So I'm going to pick this row here, which would include this space, this space, this space, this space, this space, and this space. Okay. And so then you roll the dice. So let's re-roll just because we're supposed to. And I got a two. So guess what happens? You have to put the tile on the two. And since there was a tiger there, you have to remove it as well. So, ouch. We lost a tiger. We didn't get it. We didn't get a baby tiger and we lost a tiger all in the first turn. Painful, very painful. So, um, but yes, that's the destruction phase. But if you think that's all the bad that happens on your turn, well, you'd be wrong because now the impact phase begins. There is a deck of cards here called the impact and it's different for each animal you're playing with so if you're playing with the sea otters it's different impact cards and different things obviously so you will draw the top card of the impact deck and then take care of it depending on what it is this one is fragmentation and it's a persistent impact which means it will stay in play okay stay in play until you can get rid of it somehow when a tiger sighting card enters play 
lose one animal adjacent to a deforestation tile. So there's already a deforestation tile out and it's right next to that tiger. So if, for instance, this was already sitting out and we had drawn another card, ooh, and look, tiger sighting, and we had drawn the tiger sighting, we would have to lose that tiger because it's adjacent to it. Basically, that's what it would happen. You just lose one tiger, but you get the point. These are going to be almost always bad. Once in a while, you'll luck out and nothing bad will happen. But usually, it will be because it'll be because it'll it'll be these persistent impacts that will happen when you get a particular card showing up called tiger sighting. So it's not good, for sure. Um, definitely worse ones than this, though, if you ask me, for sure. But yes, the tiger sighting is definitely going to be quite a few of them in here. So it's going to be drawn quite a bit, and there's quite a few of these persistent impacts. So persistent impacts will always stick around until you can get rid of them, and instant impacts will take effect immediately, and then they will get put to a discard pile. And if you ever run out of impact cards, you will, dis you will basically shuffle the discard pile to form a new deck of impact cards. So you'll never run out of these horrible cards. But that's how the impact phase will, will go. And then after the impact phase is done, there is one more phase called the upkeep phase. And during the upkeep phase, you will get to draw one player card to your hand. Okay, that's the last thing you do on your turn. And then the next player would go. In a two-player game, you would just take your turns alter alternatively alternatively, whatever you want to call it. But if you're playing with more than two players, then you could actually pick who is going to go next. You guys could work as a team and decide who's going next. And you'd be basically putting these things onto this, your, your calendar here. So that's basically what that means. So you wouldn't have to necessarily go in clockwise or counterclockwise or something like that for turn orders. It can all, it all just depends on, you know, obviously who should go next, you know, at amongst you, that can go. But basically, that's how that would happen. You would take your turn, and then once everybody had taken their turn for that round, or that would be the end of the year, and you would move the calendar down one. And then you would, you would reclaim all of the dice. So that's another thing I didn't mention. When you place dice out, you can't retrieve them until until the end of a year. And then at the end of the year, then you get to retrieve all of your dice once again. So that's how that works. Um, or, or actually, no. I don't think you can, actually. Hold on. Yes, that's right. So I got that wrong. So um, when it's your turn is when you'll get to reclaim your dice. It's not the end of the year. You don't get to reclaim your dice at the end of the year. You actually only do it um, when it's your turn to claim them. When it's your turn, it's up. Then you'll get to reclaim your dice and then roll them. So that's how that's going to work. So that means that there will always be dice out, making it hard for you to take actions. For sure, which is why you'll definitely want to play cards that will add more actions so you that you can take. And there's nothing wrong with having the two two of the same action out, so that way you can increase your chances of actually playing the action. But basically, that's how the game will work. And then once you make it all the way down to the first voting year, then you have to have four votes to win the game. So let's just briefly review a few of the other votes. So we already talked about USA. So let's talk about Germany. In order to, uh, and you're not always going to have the same countries. Okay, they're not always going to be the same countries. There's, uh, uh, those are blue cards. There's five, and you play with three of them. These green cards here, there's four of them, and you play with two of them randomly. And there's three of these cards, and you only play with one of them. So you'll never play with the same countries twice. Well, most likely not. In not not next time you play anyway. So anyway, so here we have Germany. So in order to res in order to get their vote when it's a voting year, hence when the game is almost done, the first voting year, you have to roll two dice, and then the greater die result 
plus the amount of influence cubes has to be eight or more. So if you had three influence cubes on Germany and you rolled a five, hey, you just got Germany's vote. Yay for Germany. Okay, Indonesia. In order to get Indonesia's vote, you can roll two dice and then you add the total of the dice plus the influence and then you have to have 10 or more to get their vote. Obviously, that one was an easy one for me since I'm always rolling sixes. In fact, <laughs> I rolled two sixes and got 12 and I had no influence and I won the game that way. So yes, it works. And then India here. You have to have a certain amount of mating pairs plus the amount of influence that you have here in India to get to equal seven or more in order to get their vote. So if you had three mating pairs here and um, you had four uh, influence cubes on India, you would get their vote. And obviously we talked about how you get India, I mean USA's vote, you would have the four you need that in that equation, for instance, and win the game. But basically that's how you play the game. Obviously if you want money, you will have to play this action here to either acquire money or find or find an action card and play it that will let you basically gain money, like go to work, you gain two million. How often do you get to go to work and you get two million? That never happens in real life, but in this game it does. So, um, but yes, that's uh, basically all of the actions. Um, this action here, you can pay one million and then remove one destruction tile that is not adjacent to an animal. So that's the replant action. We talked we, and we talked about relocate action and we talked about plan. So and then obviously there's just tons of actions that you could potentially play in order to increase your chances of winning this game. But if you guys liked my explanation of how you play Endangered, don't forget to leave me a like and I'll see you guys again next time. Bye.